What's going on guys, Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I went over the process of running Odyssey MultiQX using the MultiQX software uh, with the supplied Odyssey microphone that comes with your AVR, Denon or Marantz AVR. And I ran Odyssey just with standard options. After that video, uh, I've been actually playing around, you know, in the MultiQX app. And uh, I am actually surprised with the results that I've gotten with MultiQX by using the Biquad parametric EQ, the tilt, second order low shelf and then I disabled the auto leveling in multi QX and I'm surprised at the way the sound has panned out. I made the changes, I transferred the filters over to the AVR and instead of you know looking at the REW frequency responses which I typically do before I do the listening, I just did the listening first. I started off with music, right? So I listened to uh, some SACDs that I have, notably the Nora Jones Come Away With Me multi-channel SACD. Wow. And then Fleetwood Mac Rumors, again, SACD multi-channel. With Odyssey engaged previously, the sound stage would collapse meaning and it would collapse around the the vocals essentially right there was no uh separation you know from a instrument perspective or from a channel perspective it was just it would become uh, a lot narrower uh, with a lot of focus on the vocals and, and music never really sounded that great unless i engaged the pure direct mode right and when i would do that then the highs would get restored the sound stage would get restored um, but then you know <laughs> i wasn't using the dsp and i wasn't using the the timing and the delays it would all depend on the speakers that i had right so the ct 7.4s the bmw ct 7.4s the bookshelves right they don't sound that great they never did uh on even on multi-channel music right uh, but if i had you know my previous speakers which were the martin logan tios full range speakers uh i had the stage x as the center the montage that you see behind me as my surrounds in pure direct music would sound great just because of the quality of the speakers so when i engaged odyssey after kind of redoing the target curve and after applying the tilt and the the second order shelf and some additional uh, filters music through the ct 7.4s sounds glorious now the the sound stage is restored the vocals you know so with come away with me for instance right the nora jones vocals right they're not like they don't come from the center they come from your uh, left and, and right speakers and a little bit you know there's a, a little bit of, uh, of the semblance of the vocals in the center but they create a very nice tight center image and it's in her voice you know it just has a lot more body to it i never got that same presence right in her vocals using the ct 7.4s until i customized that car target curve and use that tilt where I'm not using that that uh, high frequency roll off which basically kills the highs right in music so everyone everyone knows that but it also has other detrimental effects on the sound stage so the sound stage wasn't collapsing anymore the brush on the snare you know sounds a lot more natural and you can hear it clearly now moving from your left to the right and doesn't have that harshness uh, to it right as it used to before and then with Fleetwood Mac rumors dreams I often listen to it right and I often listen to the beginning of that song uh, with that symbol crash right the decay with the older you know Odyssey using the app or just using the AVR never really had the same decay in that cymbal crash compared to Pure Direct. With Mult EQX, the cymbal crash is legit, right? And the decay is there, and then the bass kicks in. With that 
tilt and with that second order shelf I actually got more bass than than I'm used to the surround speakers are livelier and they create more uh, of a spatial you know effect where it's everything is separated a lot better then I switched to movies and I wanted to focus on movies that have some good surround activity because I wanted to kind of hear and see you know how the sound stage opens up or if it does if it doesn't and I put on No Time to Die. That movie does not have a lot of Atmos, granted, but there is very good surround activity. There's some good amount of bass in some of the action scenes. Something I need to tell you. I bet there is. Especially scene two. It's Blofeld, my love. Your father would be so proud of you. This entire scene, from the hotel, into the car, and then when they're in the car, when the guy is shooting at them. We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. The dialogue was super clear and crisp, and I could make out everything, right? And that's the beauty of that scene, is there's so much going on, yet, you know, you can hear the cell phone ringing clearly, you can hear the voice on the cell, you can hear the dialogue very clearly. And for me, when the guy is shooting at, at them, they're inside the car and the sound that's coming from all sides, right? That was, at one point it's in the front, then it's in the sides, and then it goes in the back, basically shifting with the camera angle. That was, that was great. It was a lot of fun and it was different this time around with Multi-Q X engaged. All right, so now let's take a look at the adjustments I made in Multi-Q X, right? So these are my same measurements as before. Nothing changed here. I'm going to go to design target curve and here as you can see I removed the theater high roll off and the mid range compensation those are not here anymore I added a bi quad parametric EQ I added a tilt and then two additional bi quad parametric EQs okay so let's just go through these one by one really quick so the first one the bi quad parametric EQ applies to all of the speakers includes reference and flat so you have various options i went with the second order low shelf i started the gradual gain right at 80 hertz that's where it's centered right that's the center frequency and then gradual increase of 5 db right as it goes across applies to all of the speakers so and then i added a gradual tilt of negative 0.6 dBs per octave and I applied it to all of the speakers as you can see centered at the one kilohertz frequency okay and it just does that gradual slope you can see right here uh, let's look at just the center channel for instance so this is in this is with the bi quad as you can see right here this is with the bi quad uh, second order shelf it's a gain of 5 dB right and then with the tilt being applied, it's um, a gradual roll off, right? Not like the Odyssey, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, everything just rolls off. So, so uh, this is minus 0.6. And finally, when I looked at some REW curves, what I found was I had two specific frequencies, right? One was 860 hertz and the other was 330 hertz where I had a little bit of a dip so I adjusted the left speaker to compensate for that using a Q factor of 6 at the 330 uh, hertz frequency and a gain of uh, 3 and same thing with the 860 uh, hertz frequency a Q factor of 427 and a gain of 5 and I calculated that using the Q factor formula which is you take your your center frequency right which is 860 in this case divide that by the difference in the two ranges right and you come up with that Q factor which is 4.27 and then I applied a gain of 5 to see how that was going to work and it actually worked out perfectly fine same thing in here as well so that's really quick those are the four filters that I applied and then what the other thing I did was for the cutoff mode you know it's it's okay to use auto only because you know I can see right here that that's it's detecting a frequency response for my front speakers at, you know where the cutoff frequency is 30 uh, 
and for center is 40 and then for the surrounds is 40 and then back is uh, 30 right so this is this is taking into account room gain so my uh, ct 7.4s from bowers and wilkins right there plus minus 3 db roll off starts at 49 hertz right so you could see that there is a little bit of room gain in here so i left it at auto i disabled auto leveling because auto leveling also takes into account dynamic eq right so i don't want any of those factors in this calibration so i checked disable auto leveling now i did that for all of the speakers including the sub look what happens to the sub so if i left multi eqx at auto leveling it is lowering the, the overall <laughs> subwoofer response the the trim and that's a no-no right so what's the point of doing all of this what's the point of adding uh you know the low frequency shelf and this and that right so i know it obviously does this because of dynamic eq based on what i've read and based on what i've seen uh, you know, from Audioholics and all, this is, it's okay, you know, if you have good, powerful subwoofers, um, you know, it's okay to check this and disable auto leveling because I just talked about the amount of bass I was getting, you know, this is in, this is on par with direct live bass control, in my opinion, um, the amount of bass that I've been getting. So, that's a good feature you know to disable to disable in my opinion so that's what i did uh, as far as the target curve is concerned so i applied these four filters and then i disabled the auto leveling and then going into filter settings one little change i made was for the low frequency eq limit i have the multi qx set up at 10 hertz for calibration settings have all the speakers set to small everything crossed over at 80 hertz okay and that's it those were the basic settings that i have uh, applied to this round of multi qx now let's take a look at the rew frequency responses here's rew and i've done some uh, measurements with magic beans i've ran magic beans as well so that's a separate video <laughs> that we're gonna go over let's focus on my original MQX um, calibration and the levels compared to what I have now. So this is the original calibration with the defaults in multi EQX. And this is the LFE. And this is the updated LFE frequency response using filters, right? The updated filters, the tilt, and then the low frequency shelf, as you can see, I am gaining significant amount of output already and this looks a lot like direct live with bass control so let's look at it closely okay so here is the latest right and here is from December 5th this this is the reason why you see this continuing on is because earlier in the month I had for whatever reason left the bass the roll off on the Morantz at 250 hertz so that's why it's just keep just keeps going so you don't have to pay attention to that for this particular purpose so it's actually it should be 120 hertz uh, and this is that red curve right here at 85 db the roll off is starts to happen around 18.59 hertz no difference between uh, the previous mqx and the latest mqx right the minus 3 db point is at 82 dbs and that is at 14.69 hertz right so which is in line with what i usually get with my subs so 14.69 hertz is when the roll off starts to happen um, here is the big difference from 19 hertz to 44 hertz as you can see the biggest jump here is in that 27 hertz range i now get 94 db versus 88.9 db right that is a 6 db difference this is significant and this is why i was getting that impression that i'm getting a lot more bass is because there is a lot more bass right five to six dbs higher in you know in this range the rest is about the same um, and if you've been following my channel remember that that nasty 
uh, null that I used to have between 87 and 97 uh, hertz, right? That null is gone with four subwoofers. Another advantage of using multiple subs. So let's take a look at the left speaker. This one right here is your original MQX, right? With the standard default settings with the high frequency the theater roll off. This one right here does not incorporate that high frequency roll off. Ex instead, you know, I'm using the tilt, the low frequency shelf, and the additional two PQ filters. The filter that I applied was at that 880 hertz range. So look how much better it is in that mid range, which is crucial, right, for your vocals. And then in that low mids, you know, at around that 330, 340 hertz range, I had a drop off of about 3 dBs, right? I could get it closer if I wanted to, but I think this is fine. So this is the variable smoothing from a left speaker standpoint. So you may think that that the original MQX is better because from two kilohertz, you know, in that upper mids to presence, uh, it's actually producing better output. But if you think about how music works, right? So this, this uh, little bit of elevation, which is about two to three dBs, depending on where you're at in the frequency spectrum, uh, will almost make your highs, right? Your brush on the snare, for instance, your uh, hi-hat, your cymbals sound more glassy and more mechanical, right? And will lead to more of a uh, edgy type of a sound, right? As opposed to a soft roll-off where it's much better for music. And then right here in the mids and then in the bass region, I am getting more bass, you know, from a overall bass output perspective. Now, let's take a look at the left and right combined output and normalize that 80 hertz see how this is this goes pretty pretty cool right all and then once you get to that one kilohertz you get that gradual roll off which i prefer for music now than before okay all right so that was a lot and hopefully you know i kept it straight and did not confuse you guys a whole lot the bottom line here is that multi qx is a very powerful tool if you want to fine tune and customize your filters the results that you see here are just from basic filters that i use right where i just tried to to add a target curve uh, with a little bit of boost in the low frequencies and then uh, a slow roll off as you go down to the higher frequencies right now i can use Use this as as I'm gonna actually continue to learn how to use this tool I am confident right that I can actually use that PEQ tool which is awesome right where you can pick specific frequencies I believe you can add up to 20 filters and to really really you know get rid of some of the nulls and the peaks that are in your speaker responses all right guys so as usual please leave me some feedback let me know what your thoughts are about you know the different filters that I applied if you are a current MQX user you know what do you guys prefer like what type of a target curve have you customized it do you like it I actually you know love the fact that you can customize this so much right it's just it's unbelievable right it's basically a dream come true for me all right so as usual please don't forget to like subscribe and share this video and I'll see you guys in the next one